Who would you closest compare Jared Russ to? Like a Sam um, Buckner or or Saner? Yeah, I think probably the the Sam Sean Buckner role is, is what he's done for us. But he does he is able to do a lot of the stuff that Saner does and. I think he has more of a running back uh, element to his game too. Like he can get handoffs out of the backfield. He did play running back, went for a lot of yards as a high school running back and as a big physical running back. So I think he's kind of like a blend of, of Saner, a blend of Sam Seenbuckner, and then of like a, a big running back. So he kind of gives us all of those elements. Has he thrown a pass yet? Has he thrown a pass yet? No, we're still in tryouts for who uh, <laughs> is going to be that uh, throwing tight end stuff. So we're always seeing who can drop one in the bucket. If you ask Charlie, you guys know him, he'd probably for sure tell you that he's the best guy to throw. But Easton was a high school quarterback too, so he thinks, yeah, they all think that they're uh, Peyton Manning out there. So we're going to wait and see what kind of diabolical tight end trick play Coach Manning runs up with, and then we'll see who can throw it the farthest, and then that'll be the guy. Be the guy you least expect, I can promise you that. You look at, you look at Russ, and then you look at Saner and different body types. Do, Kolar and Allen, I mean, do their roles kind of switch around a little bit as you accommodate Russ then? Do they do a little bit something different? Yeah, and it's it's constantly changing every day depending on what the play is. And we're always moving people around with who's the on the ball guy, who's the off the ball guy, who's the motion guy, who do we want in the front side, who do we want setting edges and things like that. And then, you know, having that match up with our play action pass stuff and our movement stuff and who runs maybe the best slip route or, you know, one of those goal line post routes. So, uh, right now, it's all about identifying, you know, who does those things good and not good, and why it's not good. It doesn't mean they can't be the guy. So, uh, we give everybody a chance to do all that stuff and figure out what they can do and what they can't do, and highlight their features and what they're good and not good at. You play as much three tight end this year as you did last year, given the fact that. Yeah, we don't. Got yeah, I'm certainly always staying on the table for that. Uh, right now, we got some other really good wide receivers, so we're, we've played in a lot of 11, 12, and. Uh, the nice thing is last year we kind of eased into the 13 personnel stuff at this point going into camp and uh, we had some injuries with Tariq and kind of backed our way into it. So now we've been able to stay in front of what the 13 personnel stuff is. So the first day of fall camp we were able to get into a lot of those 13 personnel sets and we can get into spread formations with them. We can get into our, our wing wing tight stuff and be able to do all the plays that we want to do. So uh, we haven't missed a beat. I would say that it's a little bit further than where it was last year. So. You know, the creativity that Coach Manning has and Campbell has and our offensive staff has has just evolved off of the personnel piece that we have. So it certainly hasn't slowed down with uh, with Sainer being gone, but we definitely miss him. Matt talked a lot last year about that when you guys would go out and play, that the defense you saw was different than what you'd see on film all week because there, nobody else is playing that 13. Having now 12 games of tape of that, is that helpful at all? Yeah, I think, I think it certainly does. And, being able to go back and see how people played in those formations is huge for us just to know what the looks are because last year we did have a lot of unscouted looks so we didn't know exactly what we were going to see but I was always telling those guys that they're like uh, the janitors of the offense so whatever you know they see we got to clean it up and the looks aren't always going to be perfect but we got to be able to get it right so hopefully that's a great question being able to come back and see how people adjusted those formations last year and how they lined up and uh, be able to ident or be able to correct the adjustments that they make based on what they see and what their game plan is for it but I think that'll be huge for us going into to conference play how they lined up to those formations and, and bunches and shifts and motions was there any uh, consistency among teams of what the adjustment was or was it different looks? Um, I think it was a little bit different because people would get into some of those formations, but they weren't in uh, the tight end sets that we were in. They weren't in 12 and 13 personnel. So it kind of gives us a place to start. And then uh, Coach Myers and myself and some of people on the staff just kind of project what we think they're going to do or what they had done in the goal line, what they'd done in the short yardage. And a lot of teams would treat that the same way. So if we got into 13 personnel on first and second down, a lot of teams would, you know, sub and put their goal line short yardage pack in, package in, which allowed us to be able to shift out and throw the ball and have an advantage there. So we kind of would blend what the look was with uh, the 11 personnel formations with the goal line and short yardage uh, personnel that they would put in. I've been asking some of the some of the coaches about about the recruiting aspect of recruiting athletes to a school where the athletes in four years might not know what conference won't know what conference they're in. Yep. What do you tell them if they have questions? Yeah, um, luckily up to this point, I don't think we've necessarily had a lot of those things. I think we're at a good point for us where we have one of the best cultures in college football. We have an incredible head coach, and we've had a really successful offense, and we've won a lot of games. So uh, we haven't had to deal with a lot of the, the negative aspects in recruiting. That'll definitely be something I feel like people try to use against us because they can't poke holes in a lot of other areas. But um, 
I think if, if recruits want to come somewhere where they're going to have great relationships with their coaches, where they're going to develop them the right way and help them become the best version of themselves, then they shouldn't care exactly who they're going to play. And I don't think it, we have anybody on our team now that came here to play against uh, school X, Y, and Z. So they came here because they know Coach Campbell and our staff is going to make them the best version of themselves. And we're going to have a lot of fun doing it, and we're going to win football games. How have you seen Easton grow? How have I seen Easton grow? Well, I mean, what, he, what Coach Andrews, and I know I speak all the time with, with what he's done with our guys, he's grown physically from being like a, a small-town Kansas quarterback guy. He's come in and was really somebody that we – uh, you know, focus on the physical aspect of it. But the nice thing also with him being a quarterback guy is he gets the big picture and gets to learn from people like Chase and Charlie who can drop all 11 guys versus odd defense and four down. So the, the knowledge that he has is I feel as good about him as I do from the mental aspect of being able to go into any position on our offense and be able to function and know what he's supposed to do. So the mental growth that he's had to understanding all of our plays and the details of all those plays has been, I mean, great to see from last year. And then the physical piece of it, uh, and then be able to bring it all together and, and watch him go play football with all this extra experience that he's had and played in football games last year and made big catches and made big blocks. And he understands that, and I think he feels confident that he could go in and do those things. So it's good to see him grow physically and mentally and feel good about where he's at and how he can help our football team. To what extent, or I guess how, how would you describe the amount of knowledge both Chase and Charlie have of the offense? Oh, man. To, it's hard to describe because Chase has been here for so long. Charlie has played so much football here. Between both of them, they have uh, like seven all Big 12 accolades here. And Chase is the son of a, a football coach. So coming into to here his freshman year, he already knew more than most people. But to have him in our room, it, I mean, it really is like having a second and third coach in there. And if I miss something, I mean, you already know how they are. They'll definitely let me know. But it's, a, it's an incredible advantage. They know exactly what they're seeing when we get together on the bench. They know what, what the O-line did. Like they come over and they talk to Coach Myers and myself and they're like, the O-line didn't make their combo call to the right spot. Or, and I'm not throwing you under the, the bus there, Coach Myers. That's just a, a metaphorical <laughs> example. But they are, are one step ahead most of the time. And I don't have to spend a lot of time talking to the people upstairs and, and ask what the problem is. They're able to stay in front of that curve a little bit. So their knowledge uh, going into meetings every day is we're able to focus on the details of all the extra things for the individual routes and what the blocks are instead of having to install all those plays we can really stay one step ahead of a lot of other people because they've I mean they've been here longer than uh, Mr. Walters here so <laughs> they uh, they know all the plays we don't have to spend a lot of time installing all that stuff because they could come in there know the plays and we could figure out the best adjustments and the best way to win versus certain kind of leverages in the route game and whatever the techniques might be in the in the run game. How valuable is that for someone like Tyler to be having Oh, I think it's incredibly valuable, especially to get him in the spring. He gets to see more than anything like how Chase uh, and Charlie prepare every day for practice. Like I said, they've been listening to how we install inside zone for six years. Like they could teach it back to us in Spanish if they wanted to. but. <laughs> Uh, they get to see that Chase takes the same notes every single time. He takes the same approach every single day to, to perfecting his craft. So he gets to learn from that, like what it takes to, to be a pro and how you prepare and to not take days for granted and plays for granted because you never know when, when your number's going to get called. So I think he's learning uh, how to perfect his habits and how to perfect his process, if you will. So that side of it, the preparation part of it, I think it is as big as anything and then be able to see what they do before practice, the extra work that they put in after practice, and what it takes to be a great player here has been you know, invaluable. And it's been the best thing to get him here early, just not so he can learn from you know, myself, but so he could see what those guys are like and how they became great players here. He came in, Tyler Moore was cut when he, when he got here, yeah. right? I mean, how big was that? I mean, he was physically ready to go yep. when he got here. How did that kind of speed up his process? Honestly, we, I kind of had to tell him to, to take it back a little bit because before he got here, he was already like a meal prep guy. Like he was preparing like he was a 30-year-old single guy. Like he was bringing all these meals in. Then he was eating the meals up in the in the dining hall too. So I had to tell him like, listen, you're a cheeseburger away from playing O-line right now. And he's still shredded. Like I'm not trying to say he's overweight, but he loves to lift. He loves to, <laughs> to eat. So like I want him flexible. I want him fast because he can roll. Like he's really fast. And we, I literally like the, the flexibility in the lower body for a lot of these tight ends to be able to get in and out of routes. So I think that was something that was new to him. But he came in, he was like a, a kid at Disney World here with the, with the facilities and what Coach Andrews has done and what Rachel has done with our dining stuff. So he's been, I mean, he's loved every second of it. But to say that piece, I probably had to tell him that he needed to, to cut a few of those things back before he was getting, it's not, you know, world's strongest man, we're gonna play football.
Are you still doing any special teams? Yeah, so me individually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't. I'm not in charge of a unit, but I have responsibilities on punt team and kickoff return team and kickoff. We have it all split up within our coaches, and we're all responsible for certain people. So that's been a good thing for me with the the punt team and things like that. How do we correlate the footwork with our mid zone and inside zone stuff? And a lot of those tight ends have are familiar with the footwork piece of it and. Certainly the, the toughness piece of it isn't an issue for, but yeah, I, I have developed a, a nice little role on special teams. Obviously, Charlie and Chase are polished pieces for you. Mm -hmm. What do you hope the progression looks like this season? Yeah, I think that uh, I've up to this point, I've kind of switched what their roles have been in the past just to kind of get Charlie to do what Chase does and get Charlie, Chase to do what Charlie's done. So to be able to plug them in places that they w aren't comfortable with and, you know, highlight what their flaws have been as much as, you know, people might not think that they have them, but they certainly do. So it, it's fun to get those guys in uncomfortable stops, spots and, you know, have Charlie be the on-the-ball guy and block people for power and put Chase out here and have him run double moves off of people. So we've really, like, put everything under a microscope and we've analyzed everything from, you know, stance and foot angles to top of the route. Like, we'll pause it and, you know, evaluate weight distribution at the top of a route, all right? Where are their eyes at when they're in their stem and who are they looking at? All right, defensive recognition, what coverage is this? Why are they running this coverage? All right, it's third and long. We have outside leverage man. Like, what does that mean to us? How does it affect our route? So we spend a lot of time on the individual aspect of it and understanding the big picture, not just for what we're trying to get out of our offensive play, but why is the defense playing us like this? All right, they played it here. All right, on first down, all right, what's the adjustment for when we get back in this formation, okay? They made the adjustment here when we got out of unbalance. We could always, you know, try to stay one step ahead of the curve with them. And just like I said, highlight all the little details of the things that we do instead of having to worry about, you know, that on whatever our shift in motion is just how to function and line up. So just you could break everything down as small as we can we can get it with those guys. And they're, I mean, pretty much doctors at this school now. They've been in school for so long, so they have a little bit of extra time where they can come up and watch a little bit more film. So it's been it's been fun to do. With everything that Hanukkah went through before mm -hmm. he even got to Ames, how much has that last year for him just kind of been getting him back into yeah. football shape from where he was in high school? No, that's a good point. I know he had a, a knee injury, then came here late. All right, so he didn't get the, the whole the whole summer like a lot of other guys did. And I know we had the COVID short and stuff. So he kind of came in and got thrown right into the fire. So to be able to have him and get him on a flexibility circuit, all right, for that lower body, I talked a little bit about flexibility and how important it is for me with those tight ends. All right, he looks like a different person now in terms of how he's running around and how he's moving, what his stance look like looks like. He's one of the most physical people that we have on our offense. And he'll go in there and throw it in there with anybody. And he doesn't care. And I love that edge about him. And he knows our offense too. He, he has everything down. He can do all those uh, positions. He got to see what the expectation was for a tight end in this offense. And he got to see what Sainer was willing to sacrifice to, to help us win football games. And I think he's willing to do that now. He's a guy that can go out and, and be the single wide receiver under the boundary and catch fade balls and be a guy that we put on, on motions and have him block defense alignment on the line of scrimmage. So I think uh, it's been fun to watch him understand our whole offense and to be able to be a guy that has developed physically and can do anything we need him to do on the offense. But I, I love having him in our room for sure.